How you guys all doing today? Today's video, I wanted to go and talk about Simone Mothma. So, it's kind of funny, I didn't really know too much about her, even in the movie, so when I saw this character, I'm like, who is this chick? So, I had to go look at it, and I kind of know who she is now. Um, and you can see here, she is a rebel. And it's kind of a good thing, because you have the CLS team, right? And then, who do you have after that? Well, not much. You probably have, like, some Rogue One team that doesn't do too much anymore. But now with Mon Mothma, you have that very, very strong second Rebel team, which is very good to see. Um, and before we go into anything else, these two marquee characters, they are both going to be marquees. We have Mon Mothma, and we've just had the new Chewie and 3PO. I would almost guarantee you that we will be coming across some new Galactic Legends. However, that won't happen until we get some more for the Empire, because they want to do the duality of both the... Uh, um, Rebels and the Empire, just as they have done for the Resistance and the First Order. So, you still got some time. Think of these two characters being like the Finn and the Poe for the Resistance heroes, Finn and Poe, when they were first out. And these are probably going to be a bit more easily accessible earlier than that of the First Order. So, um, with that all being said, um, Mon Mothma is an incredible, credible um, uh, rebel and support. She's a leadership, she has leadership, and she can do some major, major work. So, um, let's just go about our leadership really quick. Um, I don't want to bore you guys with all the uh, little details. It's been out for a couple days. You've probably already seen it. you probably already read, read all this stuff. But um, with the um, with the leadership, you have a bit of a synerg synergistic type of thing tying together all of these people called the Rebel Fighters. And think of the Rebel Fighters as the, Im the Imperial Troopers, that of the Empire um, sub-faction. So you kind of now have um, another Rebel team, which is pretty cool. Um, so you can see here, if she's in the leadership slot... She and all Rebel Fighter allies gain 8% of their combined <laughs> base max health, base max protection, offense, defense, potency, and tenacity. So that right there is pretty crazy because um, that's a lot of stat sharing. And I feel like with the Rebels, and uh, I guess more of Light Side in general, they do share a lot of their stats together. For example, you have R2, we just got the new Chewbacca, and you do have some synergies with... Um, the 3PO there as well, but I would say more of the more along lines of the new 2PO and also R2. So now you have Mon Mothma who can do some of the similar things. And keeping in mind here with the new Chewbacca and 3PO that they do share stats if they have a rebel leadership. And this is a rebel leadership, so you will get even more of these stats if you have rebel Chewie there. The the not the OG Chewie, but the 3PO and Chewie, the Chew PO. So you got that. So now you can see the other juicy stuff a part of her kit, or her leadership rather. Um, she says, it says here rather, Mon Mothma and Rebel Fighter allies have a 100% chance to assist each other whenever they use an ability during their turn, dealing 90% less damage. But that will now go to 40% less damage if they use an ability that does no damage. So think of it kind of like an Akbar, right? Where... In Akbar's leadership, if you, if you use an ability that does not do damage, he actually calls into and assists another random rebel. But in this case, they're now going to be dealing even more damage. It says less damage, but it's going to be even more damage, re referring that into the 90% less damage. So a little bit more damage output, which is pretty cool. And uh, that's awesome. And as well, the last part here, it says, and the ally dispels all debuffs on the healthiest rebel ally. Pretty dang cool, right? Pretty dang cool. Um, so, talking about that for a second, um, the damage dealt, like the no damage dealt at all, people who have that, really, I would say, are just going to be um, her and some people who can revive. Revives don't do any damage, um, so for her, she has a basic that does no damage, she has one of these that deal no damage either. I think her entire kit does no damage, none of her specials do any damage, so with that, she, you're actually going to get a lot more assist than you might think. And also tying into um, the play, the um, other people who can revive and, and do other non-attacks and even more assists. And that's pretty cool. Um, this whole team, I feel like, is going to be pretty centered around revives and kind of being a little bit more sustainability kind of things going on there. A little bit harder to kill. Also doing that damage over time, that's going to be consistent and uh, pretty reliable, I would say, for the most part. That's a lot of extra offense as well. Sharing that as well is pretty cool. Um, so, now we go into her uniques. We'll go into her specials a little bit later, but her unique here, she has 50 or fifty more speed, plus 50 speed. She can be targeted and is immune to taunt effects. 
um, and she runs away if um, she's the last person alive, just like a 3PO or a uh, Hermit Yoda or a Wat Sambor. So she has more speed, which is pretty awesome. We'll have to see how fast she actually is when her stats come out. But the big thing here is that she can't be targeted and is she is immune to taunt effects. So you can still do damage to her. You can still deal damage to her, but you cannot target her. So I think AoEs can still do damage to her if you can get to do an AoE. So you can still do um, AoEs. Um, that's pretty. Uh, it's pretty awesome for like people who were to fight this. And I want to bring up another important point here in a little bit. But just the fact alone that you can't target her um, is kind of interesting. So you can see here in some of these animations that she brings. Um, by the way, she does bring in another ally, uh, rebel, uh, an off a rebel officer. It says here, or rebel commander, and you can kind of stack it upon themselves as you get that um, special back and back and back, right? But the fact alone that now we've had, I think, what is that? Three now characters that bring in another reinforcement, I guess you could say, another person, another person to the table, another character to the table. Um, we've had GBA with the Brute. We've had um, the Arc Trooper with his turret. I think we're uh, we're going to probably be getting closer to having a new Mandalorian with the child, the AK Baby Yoda, but making him not get hit whatsoever. You can't deal damage to him at all. And that would be pretty interesting. I don't know. They could... They could certainly set up something like that in the future, but we'll have to see. But the other big point here I wanted to make is, so we just talked about the revives, right? And the fact that she can still be hit by AoEs, but she can't be targeted. Well, what does that kind of scream in, in my in my ears? Well, to me, it kind of screams the troopers. Um, I know we don't have much troopers here at the moment. We kind of did a, we did a video not too long ago about the troopers and talking about them, but. Just think about it this way, and, and why I feel like the troopers will still kind of be more prevalent and more more um, powerful over these uh, these new guys, if we do get some more love. At the moment, with the current state of now the Mon Mothma and how the troopers are at the moment, probably not going to be as good, but I can definitely see some either touch-ups and some new troopers here being added to the freaking game and being able to destroy these rebels. And um, the reason why I feel like that's going to be the case is because a, they have AoEs, and B, they get even more TM and buffs and all that sort of stuff if you kill somebody. And if they can revive people from the Rebels, if, if they revive any more um, people, they can kill them yet again, and they get easy kills and easy um, um, things here with, it says right here, whenever an enemy is, is defeated, while Veers is active, Imperial Trooper allies gain offense up, and they gain 50% turn meter and recover 10% protection. So that huge boost of TM can be very, very important. And I think it might be the thing that will kind of make it uh, the crutch for the Rebels is with the revives and being able to get easy on kills with the troopers. So I would say, from me speculating at the moment, I would probably save some resources for some potential new troopers, which I do think we'll get some because this is pretty much just like the exact same thing as troopers, but for the rebel faction, the rebel fighter faction is what probably what's going to happen here shortly. But that the fact alone that you can still do AoEs and kind of just crush them and kind of just neuter them pretty much, I guess you could say, and also the fact you get even more buffs and bonuses if you kill them over and over again with the revives kind of makes me believe that it'll probably be a little bit more strong than the Rebels still, but I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I don't want to say that too early, but at the moment, I would say that's what I'd be thinking. So, yeah, um, she does have Revive. You have Revive on her for special Restore Our Republic. She revives a random um, Rebel fighter, and we'll go into who those guys are in a little bit. With 40% um, health and protection, which is kind of a good boost of um, health and protection there, and then she calls all Rebel allies... Um, um, actually, no, no, no. All Rebel Fighter allies to assist with a rally. So kind of think of this as a revive with uh, kind of the RH um, Finn, the, the hero Finn, with his rally and then the mass assist if you are an attacker and all that sort of stuff. So pretty good stuff there. And then you have her basic that just does some more healing, kind of like a Hermit Yoda, nothing too crazy there. And then you have her other special here, which calls into a sit or calls in rather the summoning for Rebel Trooper. And you can kind of stack that up with um, how many times you want to use it. And you kind of get some more bonuses the more times you use it and as you go forward. And then you got the Rebel, the Rebel Trooper here who is an attacker and can deal some nice big damage, some dazes, some other stuff here, which kind of is an kind of is a interesting interesting thing here because you can inflict daze here. And like I said, the troopers, I think the TM will be kind of crazy at times because they're going to get so many kills. And I think the days might be pretty nice here. We'll have to see, though. Um, and then she has, or this guy has another unique, just a little bit more stuff added on. But the other thing I want to go about here, that's kind of Mon Moth. The other thing I want to go about here in this video is the rebel fighters and who they are, which ones we'll get, and who will get the tag, rather. So here you can see there is a pretty good chunk of rebel fighters. So we got all the way from Baze Malbus to Biggs. 
Biston, Bodie, kind of funny there. Um, Cara Dune, Cassian, Chirrut, the Hoth Bros, both of them. You got Jyn Erso, you got K2, you got Lando kind of. Kind of weird one there, I'm not too sure why Lando is one. But you got Lando, you got Pow, you got the Rebel Pathfinder, and you got Wedge. So out of all of those people, the ones that I would say stand out the most for sure are people who can do some big damage. Because in this team, I think you're going to have a lot of revives going off. Um, so you can kind of take some extra hits and get a lot more revives happening for yourself. But you're gonna you're probably going to be lacking a good chunk of DPS and damage. So out of these guys, I would say go for maybe some wedge and some bigs because I think those guys might be pretty dang good. Um, and not to mention they have some really good ships as well. So you get kind of a bang for your buck type of thing there. But the thing I want to go into here is with wedge. And with wedge is unique here. We're gonna go and swap back over. With wedge is unique. You get lots of TM. Look at this, guys. I had a, I had a look at this myself. You get a lot of TM after you survive any any damage from a rebel or rather an empire enemy gosh an uh, empire enemy or if you get critically hit and what does that kind of mean to me well that means like the troopers this is going to be probably i think bigs will be a pretty big stop to any trooper team because of this alone because he can spam so much more assists when on it's like on a two turn cooldown you can spam spam so many more assists with this guy and I think this might be one guy that might stop and put a pretty big dent into the troopers in the in the potential future with the new troopers that we might get. Um, so he's one I would say to look out for. And his uh, cohorts would be Wedge, of course. He does some AOE damage, another big damage hit there as well. And some more speed added on with the Red, the red Leader stuff there, which is awesome. And uh, then after those two, I would say look into Chura and Bayes yet again. They've been in the game for quite a lo quite a long time, um, but you have somebody who can do some really nice healing and to kind of keep those people who just got revived topped off. And then you also have some big damage based around his buffs that he's going to be spreading on his strength of purpose. This does some big damage I've seen at Relics, and I think it might be a pretty uh, worthwhile investment for this new team. Um, and of course, his cohorts, which is Baze Malbus, an incredible tank, very durable. He has a pre-taunt, he has a dispel, and I think that might be a pretty huge one to stop the troopers. I think this might be a pretty huge one as well. So you got between all these guys, you got, I would say, the best ones you would, you would want to look into are Baze and Turret, and you got Wedge and Biggs. And that's pretty cool because everybody, I think, for like the most part, a lot of these veteran players have those guys built up somewhat. So that's awesome to see. So Turret and Baze, and you got the other wedge and the bigs and with that that's one two and you got three four plus the leadership there that's five people you got mon Mothma as leadership that's five people that might be the best team in my opinion for this new trooper or not the new trooper the new rebel fighter team um however there are some other people i might be thinking of here some secondary people you got the rebel pathfinder he has a revive and that could be pretty good but when i'm thinking about the troopers I think the troopers could get some easy kills on this guy if he can if he can keep on reviving himself over and over again. So I think maybe there's gonna be some some different variations of teams you want to use here for the new rebel fighters regarding them on offense and defense. For offense, of course, I would go for more attackers. Defense, go for some more people who are durable, some more revives, stop those revives, or uh, you know get some re get some more revives to make it a little bit harder for the enemies to fight you. And I think that's uh, I mean outside of him, I don't think. Jin's gonna be that good. I mean, she has a revive, but outside of that, I'm not too sure if she'll be that good. K2, probably not. K2, um, just he's a he's a good tank, but he's just so weird at times. He, the counterattack's not that great, in my opinion. Um, and then you just got some other guys like uh, the, the bros. They're not that great, right? But I would say the ones to look out for here are going to be Biggs, Wedge, Turret, and Baze. Those are the guys I would look into. And uh, if you want to get a nice little head start on this whole team and faction, so. Mon Mothma is super, super great. I would say she's top tier, um, but she still has um, a little ways to go, I feel like. You got to have some more stuff to kind of play around this. Um, not to mention, we didn't even mention the Captain Han, but he is not actually a rebel fighter, I don't think. Just double check here. He is not. He is not a rebel fighter, unfortunately enough. But everybody else that we kind of went on the list is... Um, so we don't know the best team what I'm kind of in this video kind of is speculating which ones could be the best teams and for the other part of it is the Empire and the troopers who could be the best team out there between the two once we get some more love for the troopers as well I don't know I think it's gonna be kind of tossing here which is gonna be a good thing because I want to have some variations with more GAC teams I want to have some more counters to Padme's Grievous's JKR's Darth Revan's everything pretty much and just see how they can work because that's a pretty awesome thing to have 
in your back pocket. So with that all being said, guys, what do you guys think of the new troopers? Or gosh dang it, what do you guys think about the new Rebel Fighters? Do you guys like them? Do you guys think it's a good addition to the game? I personally do like it a lot. Um, and also on the flip side, which troopers do you guys think we'll get? Because I think there's gonna be a lot of love here for the Empire. We got a Vader rework and that's about it. We are gonna probably get some more love here shortly, but we're gonna probably get some more focus on the Rebels and then Empire comes after. So with that all being said, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Like the video if you enjoyed it and sub the channel if you guys are new here. We got some Patreon and we got Discord links down below in the description. Go check them out, guys. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I will see you all later. Peace out and have a good one.